Today we're going to keep talking about acids and bases and we're going to talk a little bit more about the idea of equilibrium with acids and bases and when they do their reactions and how they behave in aqueous solutions and then how that all relates to <clears throat> the definitions of acids and bases that we talked about uh, yesterday. So something to think about, why are some acids safe to eat or drink but others are not? So you can suck on a lemon. It's sour, but it does the, the lemon juice does not hurt you. You can um, drink orange juice. That doesn't hurt you. But then there are certain acids that would be extremely corrosive and would do great damage. Same thing with soap, or bases rather. Um, you don't want to eat soap. And the taste of it in and of itself is enough to get you to not eat it but small amounts of soap would not kill you. Likewise, some medicines for heartburn are bases. You take bases to neutralize the acid buildup in your digestive tract. So why are some bases okay to consume? Well, let's talk about that a little bit more and what it means when we talk about strong acids weak acids, strong bases, weak bases, and what that all means. And we have to discuss that in terms of equilibrium. But the first thing we're gonna talk about is water, which you don't really think about water because you've probably been taught before that water is neutral. It's neither acidic nor basic. It generally has a pH of seven, which is right in the middle of the pH scale. But we need to talk about it because water reacts with itself. That's right. Water reacts with itself. So if you, when you look at a cup of water and those billions and billions of water molecules that are in there, what's really happening is you've got water molecules interacting with one another to form hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. And this is a, a back and forth process. Hydronium and hydroxide ions get formed, they react together to go back and form H2O molecules, and it just goes back and forth and back and forth. Now, as this is an equilibrium reaction, we have a special kind of constant uh, that is used to describe those, you know, remember the last chapter when we talked about the equilibrium constants for certain substances at 25 degrees Celsius, they were pretty standard values, and if you change the temperature, those constants would change. Likewise, with water, but we call it K is very specific. It's the ionization constant of water, K sub W. And the value of K sub W at 25 degrees is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Now, we can use that value when we talk about the concentration of acids and bases. So let me go back and let me show you. Do you remember when you were writing the KSP equations and if you were trying to find the K values or the KEQ values, the values of equilibrium, you would look at the reactants, you would look at the products and you would have your K value, your constant equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Do you remember that? Then you would also remember that pure liquids and pure solids didn't, don't have concentrations. So you can just substitute one in there for those values. Now, as you look at this reaction here with water reacting with itself, water is a pure liquid and water is a pure liquid. So to get the, K, the KW value in this case, it's still the concentration of the products multiplied together divided by the concentration of the reactants as they're multiplied together, but water is a liquid, so it's just one, and so you don't have to have that denominator. So when we look at K, K, KW, which we're told at 25 degrees is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, we can come back and we can use this idea of KW being equal to the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. Then we can use that to solve problems because assuming it's at 25 degrees Celsius, then it will be unless you're told otherwise, your KW 
is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So in this problem, we have a concentration of hydronium ions in a mild acid is found to be 5 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, or that's molarity, molar. And hydronium ions, remember, H3O+. Plus. So we want to know what the concentration would be in the solution of hydroxide ions. All right, so let's go back to what we know as far as setting up the equation. We know that this is in water, and water is going to have a value of one. And we know that, that we already know the concentration of hydronium ions, because that's given to us, and it's five times 10 to the negative seven. So I filled that value in right here. Let me raise that. Now, I'm gonna set that equal to KW, but I know the value for KW, assuming it's, uh, you'd be told if it weren't at 25 degrees. So at 25 degrees Celsius, it's one times 10 to the negative 14. So I'm gonna use what I know, this constant, set it equal to five times 10 to the negative seven times OH minus, and then I'm just going to divide. I'm gonna take one times 10 to the negative 14, divide it by five times 10 to the negative seven, and that will give me my hydroxide ion concentration. When I do this division, I get two times 10 to the negative eight. And that would be molar. Sorry, I can't get it to unsuperscript, but there we go. So it should be a large M, not superscripted M. For some reason, I can't get the formatting to work out. That's a molar concentration or moles per liter. All right, so I just took the KW, which is one times 10 to the negative 14, divided it by my hydronium ion concentration, which was given to me in the problem, and then that gave me my hydroxide ion concentration. Now, how can we relate this to the pH scale? Now, in the videos that you watched on Thursday, there were some equations that were tossed around, and this is a bit of a review from that video. The pH scale, as you've probably been familiar with at some point along the way, ranges from 0 to 14. And there's a mathematical construct called logarithms. And I'm not going to go into the deep, deep math of this, but we are going to use log. And there's a button on your calculator that you can use. You, it, you just press that button, and it goes and it helps you calculate the logarithm. So now the pH scale comes from this formula. And you calculate pH by taking the negative log, and that's how you would type that in if you needed to in your calculator. You would say negative, not minus, but negative log, and then whatever your hydronium ion concentration was. That would give you the pH. So here, let's look. Remember how we talk about pH being of water being seven? Well, here's how we know that. So pure water has a concentration well, not concentration, you can't do concentration. So to find the pH, you would take, remember how we looked at KW, the reason it's KW is, is one times 10 to the negative 14 is because the hydronium ion is one times 10 to the negative seven, and the hydroxide ion is one times 10 to the negative seven. When you multiply values with exponents, you can add the exponents together, so you get negative 14. So you would take, sorry, you would take the negative log of the, hydro the hydronium ion concentration in wa for water, which would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And, and what this log does, basically, is it removes, it's a log base 10, and it removes all of this log and 1 times 10, and basically brings the exponent down. And so you have negative, because this negative out here, times the negative seven, and that seven is just this exponent. So water has a pH of seven because the hydronium ion concentration is one times 10 to the negative seven. Now, just general guidelines here, acidic solutions have pHs less than seven, basic solutions have pHs greater than seven, and a neutral solution is seven, which is water on average. So here's a couple of problems that we'll do with this. And this is for pH, but then we can conversely do that with pOH because they're kind of interchangeable processes. I don't know why this is. Let me bring that down just a little bit. All right, here we go. Okay. 
editing here. The hydronium ion concentration in a shampoo is two times 10 to the negative five. What is the pH of this shampoo? All right, so I'm gonna use my formula and let negative log of my hydronium ion concentration, which is just given to you right here in the problem. And so I'm gonna say negative log of two times 10 to the negative five, and I just literally crunch that into my calculator. Okay, negative log of two times 10 to the negative five, and you get negative 4.7, so the negative times the negative 4.7 equals 4.7. So the pH of that shampoo is 4.7. All right, another kind of problem that you might Mm, sorry. It's frustrating. What is the pH of an aqueous solution of 0.4 grams of hydrogen iodide or hydroidoic acid dissolved in 500 milliliters of water? Now, a couple of things. This is a little bit more complicated. All right, let me show you. I want the pH of an aqueous solution of four grams, or 0.4 grams rather, in 500 milliliters of water. Now we're talking about concentrations. In order to find the pH, you have to find the concentrations of hydronium ions. Well, I don't have concentration yet. I have the mass and I have the volume. So the first thing I gotta do is convert grams and milliliters. I gotta get that to moles and I gotta get it to liters. So here's what I want to do. I want to take that 0.4 grams, 0.4 grams, and I'm going to divide it by the molar mass, which is 127.9, and I get 0 .00, oops, 0 0.0031 moles. Okay. Then I'm going to divide that by the volume, and I converted that to 0.5 liters because I want molarity, I want concentration, which is moles per liter and I get 6.2 times 10 to the negative third. That's my concentration. And that's my concentration of HI, which when it dissolves in water, you're gonna get a hydronium ion, one-to-one -one ratio, and iodide ion, okay? So I'm going, I can take this concentration and fill it into my hydronium ion because when it dissociates, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So when I do that, I take the negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative three, and I get a pH of 2.2. All right, so how does that relate to the POH scale? Well, that, so pH is a description of the concentration of hydro, hydronium ions in solution, kind of. And so POH is concentration of hydroxide ions. And it's the same idea. We take OH is the negative log of the concentration of OH minus. Now, here's the nice thing about it, is if you know one, if you know the pH, you can easily calculate the POH because it's just knowing that the pH plus the POH equals 14. So once you find one of these values, you can easily find the other one, okay? Because they're equal to 14. And here's just an idea of the scale. This would be like a litmus paper indicator. So seven is neutral and doesn't change the color of litmus. And then the more basic you get, meaning the higher the pH, the bluer the, the, the litmus would turn, okay? And likewise, the stronger the acid, the lower the pH. Okay. So the pH is written up here and you can see like a pH of one or a pH of zero has a hydrogen ion concentration or a hydronium ion concentration of one. pH of one tends to the negative one. And you can see because it's a negative log calculation, this exponent just gets brought down and that's your pH value. Likewise, down here is just a running you know, pH and pOH zero. If there's a, this pH is zero, the pOH is gonna be 14. So 10 to the negative 14 is your hydron, um, hydroxide ion concentration. Well, that gives you a pOH of 14. 
So let's see how you could solve a problem like this if you needed to find, if you're given one thing and then you needed to find the pH and the pOH and then the hydroxide ion concentration. There's a few ways you can do this, but if I'm given a problem with a hydrochloric acid and I'm told that its concentration is one times 10 to the negative one, I can calculate that pH by filling in this concentration into my negative log function. This is a hydronium ion concentration, so I know that's gonna help me find the pH. So I'm gonna take the negative log of that value and I find it to be one. Now, remember, pH plus pOH equals 14. So if I know pH, I know the pOH. So it's just 14 minus one. That gives us 13 for the pOH. And then I can find my hydroxide, or hyd yeah, hyd excuse me, hydroxide ion concentration by taking 10, base 10, and raising it to the negative of the pOH. Okay. Now another way you could also do that is if you remembered that Kw equals the hydroxide ion concentration times the hydronium ion concentration, you could also figure it out that way. Because you know one times 10 to the negative one and then you could just take one times 10 to the negative 14, divide that by one times 10 to the negative one, and you would get one times 10 to the negative 13. So there are a couple of different ways you can do that problem. All right, I'm gonna stop here for today. Tomorrow we will talk about the idea of strong acids and strong bases versus weak acids and weak bases.